Good morning and welcome to our 7 a.m. service. It is a wonderful day when we get to celebrate the feast of St. Hilda of Whitby. And it's especially fun because St. Hilda is the, um, shall we say, the matron saint of our chapter of the Order of the Daughters of the King at St. Peter's. So it's always special fun to be able to celebrate her. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll say the great and wonderful together. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O Sovereign of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of peace, by whose grace the Abbess Hilda was endowed with the gifts of justice, prudence, and strength to rule as a wise mother over the nuns and monks of her household and to become a trusted and reconciling friends to the leaders of the church, Give us the grace to recognize and accept the varied gifts you bestow on men and women, that our common life may be enriched and your gracious will be done. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from Proverbs. My child, keep your father's commandment and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them upon your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. And when you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching a light, and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. The word of the Lord. And we'll pray together a portion of Psalm 113. Actually, all of Psalm 113. Hallelujah, give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God who sits enthroned on high but stoops to behold the heavens and the earth. He takes up the weak out of the dust and lift, lifts the poor from the ashes. He sets them with the princes, with the princes of his people. He makes the woman of a childless house to be a joyful mother of children. And our second reading is from the letter to the Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all and in all. And this is a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Peter replied to Jesus, Look, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man is seated on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on the 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. 
and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. So, um, Hilda is a wonderful character of the church, and I'm grateful we can share her together. Um, her career had two distinct parts. Um, the Venerable Bede told us that he is indeed the source of much of what we know about Hilda. She spent 30 years um, in secular habit while she dedicated an equal number of years nobly to the Lord in the monastic life. She was born in 614, the grandniece of King Edwin. She was instructed by Paulinus, one of the companions of Augustine of Canterbury, uh, in the doctrines of Christianity, and she was baptized at age 13. And she lived in the king's court for 20 years and then decided to enter monastic life. She hoped to um, join a convent in Gaul, but Bishop Aidan was so impressed by her that he called her uh, to East Anglia uh, to a small monastic settlement there. And um, she was within one year uh, one year, she was appointed abbess at Hartlepool, and she established a rule of life um, that she'd been taught by Paulinus and Aidan, and she became renowned for her wisdom and eagerness of learning and devotion to God's service. And some years later, she founded the, um, the abbey at Whitby, and it was uh, an abbey that had uh, men and women serving God together there under this rule of justice, devotion, chastity, peace, and charity. She was known for her prudence and good sense, and she was sought out by kings and other public officials and religious officials for her wisdom. And um, she um, uh, did so much information, really, of the discipleship and leadership of those who were part of her community that a number ended up uh, going on to be ordained. Um, and several of the monks under her uh, care and tutelage eventually became bishops um, and pursued further study in Rome. And um, the Synod at Whitby uh, is uh, a bittersweet part of our story um, in 1663. Uh, it is the place where the Celtic order and the Roman order came together and Rome won. And Hilda is, um, she originally favored the Celtic position. Um, and when Rome prevailed, uh, she um, was obedient to the Synod's decision. And um, it's, it's a bittersweet space because um, the incredible leadership that she was able to have under the Celtic tradition of uh, recognizing women's leadership uh, was great, but as we know, um, the role of patriarchy in the Roman Church was great. Some things have not changed there, and um, and so truly that was the pivot point in our tradition where um, uh, the Church, as it was expressed in England, um, acquiesced to Roman style governance and polity, and um, and we've spent the last really. 1400 years trying to get back uh, with our passion for things. Celtic was uh, raising up uh, the leadership of women and, and whatnot. So uh, it's a bittersweet turning point in our church's history and Hilda was, um, was present there. And uh, what I hope that we can take away um, from her story, from her ministry, um, is truly the way her various gifts brought out the gifts of others. Um, there are many things to commend about Hilda, but that is the one thing that I would encourage us to think about today. Um, how are we uh, using our gifts to encourage the gifts of others? Are there ways that we can encourage others in uh, being loving followers of Jesus? Are there ways that we can encourage others to discover their own gifts and live fully into them and become fully the people they're called to be? That is my prayer, uh, especially in this challenging time. Um, that we put um, a good deal of our energy actually into growing um, those gifts of grace, um, those gifts of, of leadership and realization of our deepest selves, um, that we 
we grow those gifts not only in ourselves, but look for ways to help draw them out of others uh, and encourage others uh, so that they can go on in their fullest self to do amazing things in God's name. So that's my prayer uh, for all of us at this time that we, um, we do that kind of discernment and, um, and uh, encouragement. Uh, and I think we as a community, as a society, as a church will go far when we are able to invest uh, in love um, in those uh, with whom we find ourselves. So that is my prayer for us all. And let's draw our hearts together and pray for the church and for the world. Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And indeed, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And I can imagine you all uh, there at St. Peter's sharing the peace with one another. And it's a beautiful, beautiful image in my mind. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray the general thanksgiving together. God, our creator, our center, our friend. We thank you for our good life, for those who are dear to us, for our dead, and for all who have helped and influenced us. We thank you for the measure of freedom we have and the extent to which we control our lives. And most of all, we thank you for the faith that is in us, for our awareness of you and our hope in you. Keep us, we pray you, thankful and hopeful and useful until our lives shall end. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, 
Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you on this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. See you soon.